Why discuss consciousness in epilepsy? Loss of consciousness has a major negative impact on patient quality of life. Impaired consciousness in epileptic seizures can lead to significant injuries, including motor vehicle accidents, falls, burns, and accidental drowning. In addition, impaired consciousness during epileptic seizures can lead to cognitive lapses, which can have a major negative impact on performance at work as well as at school. Finally, loss of consciousness during epileptic seizures and the unpredictability of this loss of consciousness can cause a social stigma for our patients, leading to major social and behavioral stress. Therefore, the impact on patient quality of life through loss of consciousness in epileptic seizures is at least as great as that seen with motor convulsions. However, seizures with impaired consciousness without motor convulsions are far more common, so that impaired consciousness in epileptic seizures may have a more significant impact on patient quality of life. Another important reason to study impaired consciousness in epilepsy is the potential for developing new therapies, such as uh, surgical interventions, including disconnection procedures, and stimulation devices which may prevent impaired consciousness during epileptic seizures, even if we can't prevent the seizures themselves in all cases. In addition, new medications may, de may be developed which can prevent impaired consciousness during epileptic seizures. Finally, understanding the mechanisms and the behavioral aspects of impaired consciousness and epilepsy may lead to new neurobehavioral interventions to improve the quality of life of our patients. Here at the International League uh, Against Epilepsy Conference in Rome, we have a, uh, a plenary session on impaired consciousness and epilepsy, mechanisms and clinical significance. First, we had an introduction by Fabian Picard who discussed the networks and the anatomical pathways affected by epileptic seizures. Next, Stephen Laurie spoke discussing the functional anatomy of disorders of consciousness, placing the work on impaired consciousness and epilepsy in the larger context of other disorders of consciousness. Jean Gottman next spoke on neuroimaging, the default mode, network, and unconsciousness in generalized epilepsy. And he spoke about the particular networks that are affected in generalized epileptic seizures. Fabrice Bartolome next spoke on electrophysiology of impaired consciousness and focal epilepsy, focusing on intracranial EEG and abnormal synchrony seen in the global workspace that's involved in impairing consciousness and focal epileptic seizures. Finally, I spoke about basic mechanisms and impaired driving in epileptic unconsciousness, uh, using animal models as well as studies in human patients to find common themes in epileptic unconsciousness. To summarize some of the uh, findings that we found in all of these talks, we saw common networks affected regardless of the seizure type when consciousness was impaired. Whether it was an absent seizure or a generalized tonic-clonic seizure or a complex partial seizure originating from the temporal lobe that was being discussed, all of us found that the same anatomical networks were affected, what may be referred to as the consciousness system including the lateral, frontal, and parietal association cortex, the medial frontal cortex, the precuneus or medial parietal cortex, as well as the upper brainstem arousal systems and the medial diencephalon. These specific regions of the association cortex and subcortical structures are the final common pathway of impairment in all epileptic seizures that cause impaired consciousness. Therefore, we hope that by studying these mechanisms and further understanding what causes impaired consciousness in our patients, we can arrive at new therapeutic modalities to improve their quality of life.